It's all been told, and this is what's going on. So the groom prepares. The groom expects to be with his father about one year, okay? During this time, the groom prepares a place for the bride. So depending on, I guess, you know, the groom and his friends, how good they are at construction and all that kind of thing, right? He's going to prepare a place for the bride. I remember uh, one of my friends from the church down in Alabama when we were down in there, um, he decided to build a house for his family, and he was already married, he had a couple of kids, and he laid, laid the foundation, and they actually lived in their basement for several years before he could get the top part done. Now that's not what this is, right? This is something where the guy's going to be vigilant. He's going to, this is going to be his, his main thing. He's not going to be working in the day and then going back and hammering a couple boards in at night. It's going to be his main thing. So John 14, 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So that's what Jesus is doing right now. He's preparing a place for the millions, bazillions, gazillions, I don't know. How many? But he's preparing a place for the spirit beings, for his sheep, that we're going to be a part of that kingdom. So that's what he's doing right now. The starting gate is opened. So the groom's father inspects the building for quality and such. Now, I don't know what kind of inspection that is. Uh, you know, knowing his son, he's probably going, oh, yeah. And he's like, or, yeah, man, he's, he's awesome. He knows what he's doing, right? The father then announces to the groom, all is ready. It's ready. Okay. So the groom takes his entourage to meet the bride. And again, this is normally about a year later, give or take. Acts 1 7. He replied, The father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. So here it is, you know, the, the father tells the groom, uh, Jesus in this case, you know. It's time, it's time. It's time for all this to start happening. So the groom arrives. The groom and his entourage parade at night with torches and fanfare to the bride's house. So you can kind of picture this in your mind. First thing I thought of as I was thinking about is one of those Frankenstein movies where, you know, all the townsfolks are carrying torches going up to Frankenstein's house to try to get it, even around with pitchforks and all that. Well, that's not what this is. It might look like that, but there are no pitchforks. So they're all going through the town towards the bride's house with all this fanfare. So the parade of onlookers, all these people that are that are probably getting out and like, what's going on? They realize what's going on because they're, you know, this is the typical thing, right? And so they're walking through the town and they're crying out and shouting and everything, and that warns the bride. It gives her a few minutes to jump up and get her bridesmaids and whatever. Her, her entourage and get their stuff together. It gives them a little bit of time. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So here he comes. He's coming with the shout, with the sound of a trumpet. And the dead's going to rise, and those who are alive that are in Christ, they'll rise as well. So he's coming. He's arriving to get his bride. The homecoming. So the groom and the bride journey back to the groom's father's house. There isn't, to my knowledge, a single scripture that clearly states after the resurrection that we return to heaven with Jesus. But if you look at all the scriptures, you know, it, it, to me it has to be. I know the past belief was the resurrection occurs and Jesus goes down to Mount Zion or Mount of Olives with the saints. Well, I don't see that. That's just my opinion, my interpretation. I think they all have to go back up into heaven for this wedding feast. And then they, it, it definitely says Jesus comes from heaven to fight Armageddon. The wedding chamber, seven days. So the groom and the bride spend the next seven days in the wedding chamber, okay? This is a G-rated sermon, so you guys don't have to worry there. I'm not going to get into any details, right? <laughs> so the excitement of the saints, praising God in Revelation 19, is going to far exceed 
anything that happens in the wetness or chamber. And we'll just leave it at that, right? That seems to kind of correlate with all this praising of God and everything is this time period. So then after this time period, the bride is presented, and then the feast begins. Revelation 19.9. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. So that's what's next. They come out and present the bride. You know, you're kind of at a, a, at a wedding now. It's kind of like that. So, uh, and he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. So, you know, when you're at a, at a wedding today, most of them, if you go to the reception, you... You sit down and you're ready to eat and you're waiting for the bride and the groom and you're sitting there and sitting there and finally when they get there you're thinking in your mind you know, it's about time i'm hungry you now let's get this going but that's how this is going to be presented so i'm thinking maybe at this wedding feast you know i want to keep this in your prayers this is my opinion but you know jack stack barbecue would be good um a loaded baked potato would be nice because you won't have to worry about bacon you don't have to tell them to keep baking off your, your potato or your salad or any of those things. Probably a little bit of the bubbly, I don't know. You might be popping some corks up there. And for dessert, of course, you're going to have chocolate as far as the eye can see, right? <laughs> Cake, cupcakes, pie, pudding, ice cream, all. So the honeymoon trip. So I don't know that it's part of the Jewish wedding, but I'm sure they probably did something. But our trip is we return with Jesus for Armageddon, this bad stuff. Uh, for the most part, humanity is going to be wiped out. There will be some people left because there are humans in the millennium. But <clears throat> so then our uh, Lord and Savior will sit on his throne on earth and begin his reign in the universe forever. So that's going to be some exciting times. It's not going to be, you know, I don't know, it's kind of hard to think of it from a human perspective if you're a spirit being. You go down there, but you'll understand why it is, because these people have been evil. And I'm sure that the, all the bad stuff that goes on during the Great Tribulation towards the saints will be enough reason to, to, uh, to join in. So, my hope is that this sermon was uplifting. I know we're living through some bad times. Trying to encourage you to kind of, you know, it's going to get darker. It just is. It's going to get darker. But at the end of that tunnel, on the other end is the true groom, Jesus Christ, and his light is going to shine beyond anything that we can imagine.